a great day to worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. God is so good, so, so good. All the time. Yeah. We've been starting a, a series last week called Family Life. It come, you know, how many of you have played that game Life? Remember the game Life? You played that game before. And the idea was you, you uh, had this little wheel that you had to spin and then had this board place and uh, you took a career path, whether it be... Uh, what was, from the career, was it career path or or college or college path and you know you kind of everything was by chance really yeah, you just spin and luck of where you land yeah, yeah space tells you if you win money or you have to pay a bunch of taxes yeah yeah that's how life is right just you no know, so last week we talked about hey anything as it relates to marriage is intentional that you just don't wake up one day and you have a great marriage and so last week we said hey you've got to be intentional you can't just spin the wheel and have a great marriage. As we talked about communication stuff last week, stuff that really applied to everybody. Because often, I'm trying to say one thing, and you're hearing... It's totally off. Yeah, she's hearing something totally different. But no one else relates to that, I know. (laughs) Today, we want to talk about children or kids. And let me just say this, you, you don't have to be a parent to have this message applied to you because we all interact with kids. That's true. There's many, many people, even this week with BBS, there's a lot of people that didn't have children, but you are an influencing their lives greatly. Uh, Proverbs says this, hey, train your child in the way he should go and when he's old, he will not depart from it. So that's definitely all of our responsibilities to do. Yes, hold on to that scripture. But that being said, it is every child's own mind and their own choices and their own what they're going to do with what you have instilled or what we have yeah. instilled in them they still have choices that's hard to see kids yeah. make the wrong choice it is very difficult but we thought as what what i don't think there's a better way we usually try to do baby dedication at the very beginning of the service because kids get scrambly right like they're all so pretty and then like 45 minutes later okay just forget it so, she, she agrees. Yeah, yeah. Amen. <laughs> preacher. It's the first time. Way to train them young. Good job. Good job. Good job. But today we thought, man, there's probably no better way to talk about training kids than to do a baby dedication. A way of saying, you know what? It starts at birth. Saying, I'm dedicating my kids to the Lord. I'm presenting them to Christ. Uh, we don't baptize children because uh, Scripture says that you believe or you repent, and then you follow that in obedience to baptism. So what we do is we dedicate our kids, and it's kind of, they dedicated Jesus to the temple, uh, Samuel was dedicated, and so it's just our way as parents of saying, hey, you know what, we recognize that this child is not really mine, that he or she is God's, and it's my responsibility to say, God, they're yours, help me to raise them in Christ. Amen. All right, so what does God's word have to say about parenting? Uh, We know that it's not just by chance, you just don't spin the wheel and something happens, but there are some practical ideas, some practical strategies. Am I messing stuff up? No. Sometimes you have a kid by chance. Oh, that's true. You do have a kid by chance. (laughs) Anyway. (sighs) All right. You know what? (laughs) So the first one is this, hey, don't forget your role. Yes, you parents are called the parents. Yes. We are called, it's a really hard job sometimes, it's very exhausting. We are called though to be parents. Here's what Deuteronomy says, hey, this commandment that I give to you today uh, to be upon your hearts. It's interesting because, so first as parents, our, our responsibility is first on our hearts, right? So let this commandment, let the words of God, let his leading, let his guidance be first on my heart and then Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit down at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. It's interesting because really what Scripture is saying is that leading kids, raising kids, raising young people isn't just about a Sunday thing. It's about an every day, every moment is a God opportunity to share Christ with our young kids. Amen? Every moment. So not just Sunday, but every day, every moment, this is a God opportunity and so I think that's huge. Yeah, so whether you're a grandparent or you're a legal guardian or a teacher, and like I said before, I mean, BBS, there's people that didn't even have kids, but they're getting in there because you, no matter whether you like it or not, you are influencing someone. It's either for the negative or the positive. Yeah. And so whether you're a parent or a teacher or a coach, whatever you are, if you are living, you are influencing someone. Yeah. 
Um, and one of the important things I think to remember, especially as parents, is, you know what? Your child is not your BFF. Amen. Your child is not your best friend. I mean, I, I think we should be friends with our kids. I mean, that's part of parenting, but your first responsibility as a parent is to parent, is to function, function as a parent. There's an emotional side that comes, especially as we raise kids throughout you know, young ages, and at first they're all cuddly and cute, and they're like, ah. But then you start, you know, then as they get older, that's, anyway, they're still cuddling. Well, they're not really cuddling cute so much anymore. They're more obnoxious and loud. <laughs> but anyway, um, but to remember that, hey, we're called to function as their parent. It means to lead, to guide, and that's not always emotionally easy. Right. Amen? And as they get older, there's going to be those times where you could respond as a friend yeah. or the way you're supposed to as a parent. Yeah, so for example, uh, let's just give you a hypo hypothetical situation maybe. If your child gets in trouble for eating or chewing gum at school, they might come home and you might respond with something like, your teacher is an idiot. It's just gum. Right? Because that's an easy thing to do. You can respond in a bad way. As a friend would respond, but you have totally disrespected anybody in authority by doing that. Amen. You have maligned everybody in authority. So when a difficult time comes with your child, be the parent. Function as a parent. Teach them to honor those in authority, especially when you don't agree with them. Yeah, because maybe it, it isn't a great rule, but instead you could say something like, you know, we had that rule when I was a kid and I really didn't like it. I wanted to chew gum too, but that's the rule and you got to follow rules. Yeah. We have to follow rules and you have to respect their wishes. So yeah. better way to address it. Yeah, them. two different responses. One really kind of is more of an emotional part and I'm just being a friend. The other part is more of, hey, importance of honoring adults. And two different ways you can go with it. Other th times are when like a child is trying out for a play or uh, maybe to be on a sports team and they don't make it, and you can respond to, well, have they ever directed a play what? before? Um, do they even yeah. know how to coach a team? Do they not know your talent? They're just losers without you. We're not even gonna be in the play. Yeah, so they, that'd be, I mean, how many parents, that's how you wanna respond, right? Because you don't want your you kid like- You might feel that inside, but- Don't say it. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, be the parent. Do what's right. You're not their best friend. Be the parent, and so you'd say, Hey, you know what? Maybe it wasn't fair. Maybe you were better. But at this point, this is where we're at. And keep working hard. Keep doing your best. But let's honor the person that got the role that you wanted. Amen? Let's honor the starting guard. I remember growing up in my family. This was, I had a brother that played basketball. And this was a tough part because, you know, everybody thinks their kid's the best or their brother, right? Like, he should totally be the starting forward. I know that. And it didn't go over so well. Anyway, it's a whole different topic. Life is tough. It is tough, yes. But we don't want to like ruin uh, their future of being under the authority. They're going to have a job someday. Their boss is going to require things a certain way. We don't want to ruin authority. They're going to have to follow police officers and just we want them to have a respect for that. And it starts with us parenting. And I would think part of that as well is, um, I mean, it's not our job to keep our kids happy. It's our job to have our kids do what's right. In the light of eternity. Uh, but that would kind of segue into my second, the second strategy I think uh, the Bible talks a lot about. is really, and maybe it's a process of trial and error, but learning when to say yes, learning when to say no, and learning when to simply say, you know what, you're at an age, you need to decide, and reap the consequences for that, for that decision. Mm -hmm. That's tough. That's tough. Uh, um, you know, we have, we have different guidelines in, in, in our home good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, one of something that's really important to us is our, our kids being a part of family worship, church. Mm -hmm. uh, it isn't because church brings you to Jesus, but it is because it's God's family that we're called to be a part of. And so for our kids, there might be times that maybe they'll miss a Sunday or a Wednesday, but for us, if it came between, hey, I can be on the sports team and I'm gonna miss every Wednesday or every Sunday, um, for us, we're saying no. We're saying no. We're saying no. no. 
And, and, and I'm, not, I'm not shaming anybody. I'm not, I'm not shaming. I'm just saying you, every family's going to make a decision. But I'm just saying here's the deal. Most likely. Yeah, this is hard, but most likely most kids aren't going to be in the NFL. I know, it's tough. So, I know. Or the NBA. Traveling or team. Broadway. If they're not in the traveling team, then they'll never get to pay my retirement bills. <laughs> That's what we're hoping for. Yeah. But, and so sometimes you, you put those things more important than values and Christian walk. And in reality, they may not touch a sporting event again once they're out of high school. As a youth pastor, this was always tough for me. I would have a kids gone, they'd be here one week and then gone four or five weeks and then here a week. And then I'm like, dude, I, I, I can't even, I don't even know your kids as a youth pastor. So how can I be a part of that ministry? And, you know, anyway, I, I don't want to upset people. <laughs> you know, sometimes as parents, we give in because uh, of other parents. We feel the pressure uh, and you know, this is the rules we have for our family. And you, you have to set those rules up, and the Bible gives you lots of guidelines. So, it, you know, some rules are, are you know, law because the yes. Bible says so. And then some are, this is what our family does. Yeah. And so sometimes you give in to that pressure because you feel the pressure from other parents, such as, you know, the kids are telling you, well, everybody has this item. Everybody. Everybody. I know my kids hate me right now, but they'll, they'll love me later. Everybody, like every person in the whole world, everyone, anyone. Yeah. And most of the world doesn't have running water. But everybody has this item, so we give in to that. Or everybody gets to be a part of this group. And so we feel that pressure, and we don't want our kids to feel left out. And so then we do give in. Sometimes it happens in the house, our own walls it happens. So like you have kids, we have kids from 17 to 2. And so it's like a zoo all the time. It's just crazy. But... So the older ones are doing older stuff. They get to be in a more freedom. And the younger ones will look at that and be like, that is so not fair. And, you know, they want to be able to do, to be on social media. Well, they're not 13 yet. Or they want to be doing certain things that the older ones are doing or go places by themselves that they can't go yet. Um, so it's hard because you want, you don't want them to miss out, but you want them to wait for them to. And I think it's, I mean, here's the, the, the important part. Really, it's huge for your kids' growth to know that anticipation of waiting for stuff and to know that at right ages, right times. Uh, but even with the, as they get older, the, the importance of letting your kids make some decisions on their own. But then the important part is when they make the decision to let them get the consequences for that. Sometimes you want to protect them a little bit too much. Uh, there is King David. King David was, I mean, we know him as a really great king, and, and he really was. He was a king who was after God's heart. Uh, we know that. But one of the things about King David that we also know is that he wasn't the best dad. He really wasn't. Look, look at scripture. Here's a couple. Of them. One is... One of the verses that's interesting is found in 2 Samuel 23. And King David's uh, oldest son that was alive is, by the, is Amon. And one of the other sons is Absalom. So Amon, Amon falls in love with Tamar, who would be Absalom's sister, or would be Amon's step sister, right? It's just for lack like of a better term. Same dad, different mom. You follow me? I know it's half, half, thank you. Be that correcting me. It's a gross deal, but anyway. Same dad, different moms. And so he totally falls in love with her. He eventually rapes her. But King David does nothing. He doesn't do anything. He lets it go. So finally, Absalom just has enough, says enough's enough. And Absalom eventually kills Amon. King David still really does nothing. Five years later, Absalom finally has this revolt against the king, and all this stuff goes on. I can't go into the long story. But eventually, Absalom gets killed. So this is crazy, right? So King David, he's lost three kids. The first kid he had was killed in the womb. Or was, uh, he had an affair with Bathsheba. That child died. Um, Amon was killed because of his uh, brother, and then now Absalom is killed. And so we get even a further picture of what's going on. So some of us are like, maybe that's just chance. Three kids all messed up. There's another son by the name of Ad uh, Adonijah. First Kings 1-5, through 
It talks about when King David's on his deathbed, Adonijah leads a rebellion. And in case we really don't get what's happening, it goes on to explain where David messed up, really with all of his kids. Here's what it says. His father, referring to David, had spoiled him rotten as a child. And what? Never once reprimanding him. So you get this idea, the scripture says David was a great leader of a nation, a great guy after God's heart, but when it came to his family, he just stood off. I'm just saying we, we need to learn the lesson. Know when to say yes, know when to say no, and know when to say, you know what, that's a decision you have to make, but don't just let life happen. Exactly. I mean, no one likes the eye rolls. No, I hate eye rolls. The rolling of the eyes. I can't even... Now you got it now. No one, no one likes the slamming of the door or the, the move where they throw themselves on the floor. Yeah, especially when they're 17. No, I'm yeah. kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. It doesn't happen. No. I'm just kidding. No, but no, no one likes that. And that's why we sometimes as parents uh, hesitate with saying no because we know that's going to come. But if we can just remind ourselves that that the eye rolls and the door slams and, and the throwing on the floor is just temporary, but doing the right thing yeah. at the right moment, we're gonna create a, a child that is not gonna be self-indulged, yeah. not gonna be all about me and what I want me, at this me, moment. I, I, yeah. um, and you're just creating a terrible spouse for someone. Yeah. It's hard, it's hard being a parent, it's hard to know, and then you know, you know when you should have said no, <laughs> and so it comes to you, but. I just, it, find, find some support people, I'm just saying. Uh, you know, we, we've got people that we talk to that have kids that are teenagers. We have people we talk to that kids are younger. We have like, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, help me, dude. I'm dying. I'm dying. I've called um, Matt Marringer more than one time. He's a, a good, we talk. We'll put his dude. number on the screen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great parent. But he's one of them. There's a few other ones I won't get the name. There is a part, lot. This is part of our church. There's a few people that I talk to and just say, hey. Give me some advice. What would you do? Because the answer of doing nothing is not the right answer. Plus, Say, they can relate and be like, yeah, yes. I was there. You're going to get past You're going to get through it. Do what's right, even if your kids hate you. Do what's right. At the end of the day, you stand accountable before God, so do what's right. Amen? Okay. Uh, and one of the things I have to remember as well, it's, maybe most guys probably do, Ephesians 4 says essentially, hey, while you're saying your yeses and while you're saying your noes and while you're saying you decide and all these things based upon their age category, Ephesians 6, 4 says, fathers, hey, in that process, don't exasperate your children. That means don't uh, try to anger them or don't provoke them or don't annoy them. That's my gift. Um, it's my God-given gift. Um, but Scripture says, listen, as you're leading, bring them up in training and instruction of the Lord. But don't do it with anger or with, you know, that's hard for me as a guy. And I know I fail sometimes, but I think that's huge. Make sure you're doing it in love. That can be for moms and dads. That, you know, you get caught up in the moment and you get frustrated. And... You get mad? You get mad? Yeah, I get um, mad. You ever seen Monica get mad? He, la <laughs> he laughs at me when I get mad. It makes me mad. <laughs> I think we talked about that before, but it makes me mad when you laugh that I'm mad. I do get mad, don't I, kids? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, I, 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 should, I should go on. You should go on. Number four. Some of this is really funny. I'm just thinking. <laughs> You could share. Okay, here we go. Advice. So this is funny. I, I got to share this. Uh, so yes, prior to us doing foster care, we had no problem with spanking our children at an age-appropriate level with appropriate response. Did I condition that statement enough? But under the state of Michigan. Under the state of Michigan, we do not do that as foster parents. Just so you know. <laughs> But I love talking to my kids about, <laughs> about their mom's attempt at disciplining them with the spanking. Because they say it was funny. <laughs> they say it never hurt. 
I, I, one of them who was very into drama would even cry for yes. my sake and, and he then would fake it. go tell his brothers and sister that it didn't hurt. But he faked it well. I'm just, I think it's Tears. important. I think it's important they know that. That anyway, has nothing to do with this. <laughs> they need to know this. This is important. This is important topics. Strategy number four. Monica, strategy number four. You keep going off topic. Number, uh, make time for your family. Yeah, we talked about last week about how we need to have time for our spouses in marriage. Um, also time with just friendships, but we also need time for family. Yeah. And again, I, I think sometimes guys probably err more uh, on this side than girls. Sometimes it is the girls, but for guys, especially to make sure that you make time that it's not working all day um, and then coming home and then, you know, maybe you see a kid for an hour and then that's it. And by that time, you're still worn out anyway. And I mean, again, I've, I'm so far from having this together. But scripture is scripture. I can't hide what it says, even if I don't do such a great job of it. Um, we're, we're definitely not perfect. We're just trying to be parents. you're close to it i'm just really yeah, far away I, from i can't that. even spank right <laughs> this, this is true but the state of michigan loves you for that so they're like it's just monica let him do it it doesn't matter it's a joke first corinthians 13 says hey um the love chapter love is patient love is kind love is not jealous you're going to notice all those are verbs by definition, to love, you have to spend time with somebody. You have to be involved in their life. You have to be active. And so you can't say, I love my family, I love my kids, and not be involved in their life. Yeah. And one of the strategies, kids don't just happen, you have to be involved in their lives. Have to be involved in their lives. And it can be easy, easy to be overwhelmed because we are such a busy society. I, I mean, our society is crazy busy. So sometimes, as moms or, or a single parent, it's just easy to go through the drive-thru every night. You know, go, go, go through the drive-thru, eat as we're going to one place to the next, and it's just totally busy. And, after, you know, that's fine sometimes. I mean, sometimes you've got a week where it's just, you're doing VBS all week, and so all you get is pizza, pizza, pizza. But then if it becomes like six months out where every night is just through the drive-thru, never have seen that table, then, then you gotta step back and say, why are we so busy? It could be the kids are involved in way too many things, or it could be your work hours are too right. long. Yeah. So just evaluating that. And then another one is um, electronics. Sometimes we're just like busy overload as parents or single parents, and we're just trying to make it, and the device is a great babysitter, whether it's TV or cell phone or an iPod or computer or whatever else is out there. And sometimes it's just easy to let them do that for 10 hours a day and not parent. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, this is quiet. <laughs> And it's good sometimes, but when it becomes the norm is where we got to be like, whoa. Yeah. You know? whoa. whoa. And let me just go, whoa. <laughs> Electronic devices. <laughs> Everything we share up here, we have nobody in mind. I just let you know that. As people said before, I'm not I'm not talking about anybody. So this is you, this is we not have bad memories, so we wouldn't. I do yeah, I don't even remember. You could tell me something an hour ago and I forgot. So uh, just just so you know, we never talk about people ever. We never try to if we're gonna say something to anybody, we say it straight to the person. We don't talk about it up here and hope you get the point, the hidden message. So that preface that enough. Um, within that little electronic device is a smorgasbord of junk. Is there good stuff? There is. And, and I'm not suggesting that you can't find good stuff. But the majority of what you find through social media and you find online, even if your kids, man, love Jesus and do their best, they're one click away from finding stuff that you have never seen. I'm so serious. And some of us put these devices in second graders and third graders and fourth graders and fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth, and we have no restrictions, we have no guidance, and then we say, I mean, I, I have dealt, and this is not in this is not anybody. I have dealt with more kids viewing online 
I'll use the, I'll just say online junk, whether it be pornography, whether it be just uh, violent stuff. I've had more kids between the ages of 9, 10, and 11 in the last two years than I've had all 20 years of ministry combined. And a lot of it's not even coming from the parent's device. A lot of it's coming from their friend or somebody, some parent just gave their kid this free access to internet and said, hey, I trust you. Church, it doesn't happen that way. Please, please, for the sake of your kids, don't just give your kids a device and think everything is great. Please don't do it. Your kids should not have devices until they're at an age and they can handle it. And they should never have open access to the internet until I believe they're at an age where, you know what, they're at that spot where it, whatever, they, whatever grave they start digging, they're going to have to kind of live in. And there's a certain age that happens. But until then, set up guidelines, set up time restraints. Do you remember, how many of you guys remember this? When you were younger, remember the computer? Remember that thing? It was kind of a big honking thing. And we all had this rule a few years ago that the computer was where? Yeah. Why was it in the living room? Yeah, everybody can see what's going on. I mean, everybody knew that. Like if some kid had, somebody, if some teenager had their computer in the room, it'd be like, are you nuts? Don't you know what's on that computer? Are you crazy? Right? Remember someone's having this conversation? Man, and now within this little device, we can call the phone, we can call an iPad, we can call whatever you want to call it. It's the same thing, it's just a lot smaller package. And yet we, we our young people have it in their back pocket, they take it anywhere, everywhere they go, they take it in their, I, I know I'm in trouble with a lot of kids, I get that, I'm not your friend today, I understand, but it's because I love you. Parents, you are making a huge mistake. Am I, am I in trouble? No, it's, it's good, it's true, and it's, it breaks my heart that kids are stumbling upon this, and then they're in that, caught in that world, and it won't go out of their minds. So it just, it's sad. At a minimum, Set up, you know, don't let your kids take, I mean, my advice to you, if Jesus doesn't say because there's no electronic media, but I'm sure he would. What would Jesus do? Anyway, you know, until they're at the right age, they should not be taking their electronic devices in their room, shutting the door, and you know, just don't do it. It doesn't make any sense. Your home should have a filter. I've been saying this since I've been here for five years. I've talked about this every year almost. Uh, the new one that we use is called Disney Circle. Um, not every filter is perfect. It doesn't give up, you know, doesn't relieve you of having to be a parent. But at least it'll set up some time restraints, it'll set up some guidelines, and then somebody that comes into your home that the parents don't have any restrictions on their, on their device, at least they're not using your home as an avenue for pornography or hate or cyberbullying or gambling or a hundred other issues that are happening in our culture. I think applause is very appropriate. And it is that moment of awkwardness when kids come over and we're yeah. like, oh, you're, yeah. you gotta leave your phone up here. On yeah, the it's awkward. If and I know our, our kids home, hate it, but yeah. overall in the light of eternity. Our kids probably do hate us a lot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if their friends come and they have a, they have a phone, Again, age appropriate. If you have, they have a phone and you know, there's a, it's like it's got internet. What do you call that when it doesn't have Wi Fi? Data. I'm like, okay. They don't need internet. Turn they the just... phone in. Isn't that bad? No. Right? No. Oh, some of you guys are like, dude, I'm so sorry for Rock and Scott on this drive. We don't really have Wi Fi where we live. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm going on. Okay, Mark, I go. Is it my turn still? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, could, I, don't, I think I'm going to skip that. I think the key part over time, things have changed. Like we're in yeah, society no more. Exactly. Kids used to have like this kind of role. They had the farm and help out and help in your home. Otherwise, your farmstead would go and you'd lose everything or to keep your family name or protect your home. So the more and more and more kids you have, the better. We've changed that culture. And now kids are more of like, it's just kind of a, you know, they're just like, it's for me. Our kids are kind of for us now and make us feel better. Where it used to be, we had kids to help the family system. Are you following me? And that's a big area of that as well. So the kids, like, we just kind of... They need to feel um, needed, not just wanted. Yes, there you go. They shouldn't just be, oh, you're so precious all the oh, time. So cute. They should be, you know, needed and yes. do different chores around the house and, and accomplish different things. And Does that make sense? Yeah. 
that all goes back to time, and that's how we kind of got off on the devices, yeah, which is a very important it issue. Is. But um, and when you're spending time, then you're gonna know these different things too. So find practical ways to help your kids know they're that they're wanted and needed. That they're both. They are needed. We're wanted, but man, you guys are needed too. Um, you're not just here to make us feel good as parents. Make us look good, but you're here because we need you. Okay. Uh, where are we at? Oh, my number four? Okay. Number four. And I know you've been filling out your notes. You've got such a great church. Great church. Good, good, good church. Your notes, number four. Uh, number Life strategy. Hey, life is not perfect. I know this is way too tough. It's tough. Um, not everybody's going to fit in. Not everybody gets a trophy. Not everybody wins first place. Right? Um, and I think teaching our kids from the very get-go that, hey, we talk about John 15 a lot. Oh, talk about John 15 that, hey, uh, in this world, the world is going to hate you because they hated me. If your kids are living for Jesus, if your kids love the Lord, if your kids are trying to do what's right, guess what? They're not going to fit in. If you don't fit in in your culture for doing what Jesus wants you to do, all the more your kids are not going to fit in. So don't teach them anything other than, listen, you're, you're probably not going to fit in. It's going to be awkward because you're living for Jesus and they're probably not. And you have different standards. They probably don't. Right? I have an example of that. Um, when I was in junior, when I was about a junior uh, in high school, I had some really good friends. Real, I mean, good friends, like my, they were my best friends. They had the same values as I did. They went to the same youth group. They were the kind of friends that were, you know, that kids should have as close friends. Our parents hung out, that kind of thing. And so their standards were the same as mine. And at one point, we were all at a, a party, just watching a movie, just hanging out. And it wasn't like a bad movie, whatever that would be. But it was, to me, as I was watching it, my heart didn't feel right. You mean almost like the Holy Spirit convicted you? That's a good way to put it, yeah. <laughs> and so I got up and walked upstairs because I thought, well, I'm not going to watch this. I just wanted, and I was nervous, you know, I don't want them to think I was thinking I was holier than thou, or I didn't want them to think I was a baby or whatever, you know, I remember going through that. And I was upstairs, I could hear through the vent my really close friend say, I can't believe she's not watching this. I can't believe she walked out of the movie or whatever, you know. And then they did come up and was like, you know, that was good for you, good for you to take a stand. But I knew that they still had that opinion of me. But it also gave me the confidence to next time when something came and I knew I was gonna be the only one because I was disappointed they didn't follow me because I knew their standards too. But I knew if I had to walk out and be by myself, then it was gonna be all right. And you know, as we said at the beginning of this, you can pour this into your kids' lives and guide them to where they're gonna go and give them the yes, no, and let them decide, but ultimately it is their choice. So no matter if you do all the right things, kids do wander their ways and yeah. so. Hopefully they've got good friends and good church family. Yeah, that's where all the people here come yes. from. So hey, next week we're going to talk about five myths uh, that all children are, are taught. We're going to deal with that. A couple things I want to let you know. Some of us that are auto mechanic type people, if we have a problem with the car, we will spend a lifetime figuring out how to fix it. Some of us like to bake. We will find recipes. Can I just suggest to you that we put as much emphasis in discovering how to be the right parent, protecting our kids in a multimedia world as we do discovering other things in our life? That's all we're trying to say. Amen. So you can't figure it all out today, but church, we cannot just let things happen. Spin the dice, roll this wheel and say everything will be great. It's not. Uh, one of the resources I would recommend is Effective Parenting in a Defective World. And we have this for sale. We don't make money off of this. It's by Chip Ingram, and there's a few left in back. I would really encourage this. Um, a great resource. Another thing for married people, I didn't mention this last week, is devotions. The one page. If you're not doing devotions as a married couple, it's so easy. It takes about two minutes every night. One person reads it one day, then somebody else, their spouse reads it the next day. This is a great resource as well. Very, how many guys are using this? I think there's about 10. Yeah, it's very, very good. I recommend it. We, we use it. Most of our staff do, I believe. So a couple of those resources available at the table. Amen? Hey, we got about the baptism. I know we're late. Forgive me for that. Uh, Wednesday... Uh, the worship team can come up, by the way. Pastor Patrick can come up as well. Talent night. Talent night. Hey, Wednesday. come out and watch. It's so great to see. And ice cream afterwards. Ice cream. Friday night is movie night. And then next Sunday, food. I love to eat. 
to bring some good food, look at what you should bring. Yeah. Okay.